Good evening and welcome to the Easter Vigil. We begin where we left off uh, with death, but as the service goes on, we enter into the tomb and we will find it empty. So we enter in darkness, uh, but during the course of the service, uh, we will transform uh, into Easter people. So uh, I encourage you, after we light the flame and after the Paschal candle is lit from that flame, that you all will follow the, the Paschal candle, the, the light of Christ, around to the front of the church, and as the Paschal candle stops, you will make your way into the church uh, using both entrances, uh, and you will light your candle. And I ask you to do that carefully, because it is dark in there. Uh, and then as the Paschal candle will stop three times uh, in the church, we will all light our candle uh, from the light of Christ. So the people on the ends of the pews will light their candle, and then they'll spread that light uh, throughout the, the congregation. So, uh, so all of the candles will be lit once we are inside the, the building. And also, I hope you all brought your bells. So after we transform and we make that declaration, I will raise my bell, and I hope you join me as we ring in uh, our, Easter, our Easter joy and make our Easter proclamation. Thank you. And then I invite all of you, after, after we finish this service, we are celebrating, continuing to celebrate Easter, and I invite all of you, uh, no matter what vices you may have given up, uh, or none, uh, you are invited into the parish hall to celebrate Easter uh, with a champagne and chocolate uh, reception. Dear friends in Christ, on this most holy night in which our Lord Jesus passed over from death to life, the church invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we share in his victory over death. Let us pray. O oh God, through your Son you have bestowed upon your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
rejoice now, heavenly hosts and choirs of angels, and let your trumpet shout salvation. For the victory of our mighty King. Rejoice and sing now all the round earth, bright with the glorious splendor. For darkness has been vanquished by our eternal King. Rejoice and be glad now, Mother Church, and let your holy courts in radiant light resound with the praises of your people. All you who stand near this marvelous and holy flame, pray with me to God the Almighty for grace to sing the worthy praise of his great light. Through Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated.
hear the record of God's saving deeds in history. How he saved his people in ages past. And let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. It's dark in the church tonight, but it's only sort of dark. In the beginning, in the very beginning, our world was a formless, watery mass of darkness. It was really dark. When God the Father, the Creator, began His creation, the first gift he created was that of light. Light pushes away the darkness. God called the light day and the night, the darkness he called night. Every future gift that he created would be for the benefit of the world as it would come to be. On day two, God created a separation of sorts. He separated the water on the earth from the water above. He created the sky to be a dome above our world. And close to the world, the atmosphere would be just right to support future breath. On day three, God also did a separation act. He wanted to separate the waters from the waters. So he created land called the land earth and the waters he called seas and oceans. And on that land he caused vegetation to spring forth, fruit bearing trees and seed bearing plants and let them be self-sustaining or to be pollinated so that they would be here for nourishment for the future. On day four, God gave us the gift to find our way and to mark time. He created a great light in the sky, the sun, to give our world daylight. And so that we could then have a length to our days. And he created lesser lights, the moon and the stars, to be in the sky to watch over us at night. And so later we would use these for navigation and for marking our seasons, our days, and our years. When God spoke on day five, he created every animal of every type. I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. I'm so excited. <laughs> On day five, God spoke and the waters were teeming with every type of fish and sea creature that we know. And the air was filled with the, every type of winged creature, the birds and the butterflies and the bees. And God blessed them and he said, go forth and multiply and fill the earth. And then on day six, God created every type of animal, every reptile, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And God blessed them and he said, have a good life and multiply and fill the earth. And then, and then he created human beings, male and female he created them. In his own image, he created them. 
and he's blessed them with a good life and he said be fruitful and multiply and have dominion over everything in this world and take care of my world. And on the seventh day, God rested. He rested and he surveyed all that his hands had made and he saw that indeed it was very good. From the book of Genesis, we get the story of how God began it all, life on this planet, and especially the evolving life of us humans. Thank you, God, for the gift of life. Now, <clears throat> the Lord God said to Moses, I want you to go and take the Israelites out of Egypt. And so Moses gathered together the Israelites and they went to a place by the sea called Fiahimoth, between Megdal and the sea, opposite a place called now when the Egyptians got notice that the Israelites had left, they said, we are not going to let them go. They have been our slaves. They have been in servitude, servitude to us. So we are going to pursue them. And Pharaoh gathered a large army together, 600 chariots, as many horsemen and troops on foot, and they went in pursuit of the Israelites. And the Israelites saw them coming, and they were afraid. And they said to Moses, what have you done? Why have you brought us out to the desert? Are there not enough graves in Egypt we could be buried there. Instead, we look to be buried here in this desolate place. We would rather be in servitude to the Egyptians than be here. What have you done? And Moses looked at them and he said, do not be afraid. Stand firm. You will see that the Lord will deliver you. Take a good, hard look at the Egyptians, because you will not see them again. God is your warrior. He will fight for you. Be still. Know that he is your God. Now, the Lord said to Moses, why are you saying this to me? Go forward with the Israelites, take them to the sea, part the sea. Raise your hand, hold your staff over the sea, part the waters, create dry land, and let the Israelites walk through. Now the Lord had sent one of his angels that was with the Israelites ahead of them and now the angel moved behind the Israelites with a pillar of cloud. And the pillar of cloud separated the Israelites from the Egyptians so they could not see one another. And the cloud cast darkness on one side and light on the other side. And then God created a great wind, a wind from the east, blowing hard against the sea. And Moses raised his staff over the sea, and the waters 
began to part and the Israelites were walking through and there was a water of a wall of water to the left and a water a wall of water to the right now the egyptians with their 600 chariots and as many men and horses followed the israelites following them afterward on this dry land but the lord looked out from the pillar of cloud and he cast confusion upon the Egyptians. The wheels of their chariot became stuck. They were confused and they started to cry out. The Lord is with the Israelites. He is fighting with them and against us. We need to leave. We need to get away from this place. But Moses once again raised his staff over the sea and the waters returned and the Egyptians were covered and the 600 chariots and horses and foot soldiers were drowned and not one of them survived. And the Israelites reached the other side. They saw what God had done and they feared him, and they revered him, and they loved him. And, he, and together with Moses, they burst into song, rejoicing. God has saved us. He is our savior. He loves us. And word spread, and others learned of the events. And over the land, they learned the gracious love and mercy of God and that they had been saved. From the book of Exodus, we get the story of how God set free humans who had been oppressed by other humans. Thank you, God, for the gift of justice. God grabbed me and took me to a large open field full of bones. And God led me among these bones that were dried by the sun. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Lord God, only you know that. And God said, prophesy over these bones. Dry bones, listen to the message of God. God says, I will attach muscles to you and put meat on you and cover your body with skin and I will breathe life into you and you will come alive and you will know that I am your God. And so I prophesied as commanded and there was a loud sound, a rattling, of bones coming together, bone upon bone, and muscle formed, and skin came over them, but there was no breath. And God said to me, prophesy to the breath, tell the breath, come four winds, breathe onto these bodies, breathe life into them. And so I commanded, so I prophesied as he commanded. And the breath entered their bodies and they came alive and they stood up on their feet, a huge multitude. And God said, son of man, these bones are the house of Israel. Listen to what they said. Our bones are dried, our hope is gone. So prophesy to them, tell them, God says, I will open up your graves and bring you out alive and take you straight away to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit in you and you will know me as your God.
From the book of Ezekiel, we get the story of how God breathes new life into that which we thought was dead. Thank you, God, for new life. in God the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, God's help. You persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Romans. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of our, the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a res resurrection like this. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. With the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also, you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They'd been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they, looked at, when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror 
and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the living God, who is Creator, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. So here's sort of a confession. Um, over the past 50 years that I've been more serious about my faith journey and um, more serious about worship, um, I've been in several gatherings of both clergy and lay people on that time, right after the principal Eucharist on Easter Day, you know, eight days, eight days, and it's all over, and everybody is ecstatic. And we turn to each other and say, well, we've done it again. We raised Jesus from the dead. <laughs> well, that's heresy. <laughs> you know, but it was, said, it was said with a lot of joy because think of all that goes into these eight days. I mean, your participation, your presence, all of the worships, all the music stuff, all, all of the fellowship stuff and hospitality and um, the staff and, and, and everybody. A lot goes into this. And so we've got reason to sort of say, yes, this was important. This was important. My heart was warmed. My heart was touched. I'm so grateful for this time that we've shared together. That's what people were saying. That's what those clergy and lay people were saying. It was, it was really a statement, sort of a joke. It was a statement of gratitude for all that worshipers, all that faithful people had done so that we could sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. It is all about what God does and not us. That's, that's what you heard in these stories, these three stories. Uh, people didn't do all those things. God did all those things. And people were inspired by God to do those things. But, but those were great acts of God. And the same thing goes with that empty tomb. The body wasn't stolen. The body wasn't not placed in the tomb in the beginning. The dead body of Jesus of Nazareth was in the tomb. And then it wasn't. That was a God thing. So in this Gospel of Mark, the oldest Gospel, the, the original Gospel, there's a different spin on a different statement of what those women and those disciples first experienced after the resurrection of Jesus. And you probably saw the difference here. I mean, it's pretty stark. The last line is, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. That's how it ends. The Gospel of Mark, the resurrection story. I mean, you can understand why the women there were concerned, trying to understand it. I mean, goodness gracious, what if, I mean, think of what we would, how we would have reacted. It was just a mind-blowing event. It was a troubling event. It was, it was just hard to understand. But they got, they got instructions, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. He is not here. Look, there's the place where he lives, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. And there you will see him. So the tough reality, Jesus' body is broken and dead. And the promise, he's not here, but you can see the risen Christ in Galilee. But still, those faithful women, those faithful women, 
We're scared. We're afraid. What's going on? It was in their minds and in their hearts. Really? Do we go there? Do we trust this message? Again, think about, put, put yourself in that position. I think we would be a little unnerved too. And, and as a matter of fact, the words are there. They were filled with terror and amazement. That's all. The fearful thing is that when we're in the presence of God, it's sort of like, wow, you know, I, I can't take it all in. And also, really, what's going on? The, the awful thing, the awesomeness of God, and then the awful, the really scary thing, because it's so counterintuitive, it's so countercultural, it's so different than we would expect. So, again, it's understandable. But the gospel ends that they said nothing to anyone. But they were afraid. Where do we, what, what do we do with that? What do we, I mean, we just sang, we're going to sing some more songs, and the music is beautiful, and darkness, and the light. Why does it end? Or it actually doesn't end, does it? It's a non-ending ending. And maybe it's done on purpose, who knows, but maybe this is God's word, it's done on purpose. So that each one of us here in 1918, 2018, um, <laughs> um, we have to struggle with that question um, what, what, after the initial shock and, and the joy and the joy that we feel right now and that we will feel tomorrow also. What, what's, what's next? What's next? What difference will it make in our lives? That's the question. What different? How will we be transformed? Jesus of Nazareth was transformed into the risen Jesus Christ. How, how will we, we little humans, whom God loves so much, how will we allow ourselves to be transformed by God? That's the question. And here's, here's a tough statement. If we don't wrestle with that question, all of the joy and the love that we feel right now in this worship will be for naught. It will. Because the purpose of our faith is not really only to praise God and to be joyful. The purpose of our faith in the risen Christ is that our lives are changed, transformed again and again. And if we're not true to that path, that path, of allowing ourselves, our hearts to be opened up even more, our minds to be informed even more, our practices to be even more faithful. If we're not open to that, then we really are missing the message of the resurrection. And we don't want to do that. Don't miss this opportunity. So after we finish our worship, the champagne and chocolate in the parish hall. <laughs> Continue the joy. But I hope as you start going home thinking, you will think, I wonder what God is calling me to do in the way of being transformed into a person who believes even more deeply in the truth of the risen Christ. God is with you as you consider that challenge. Amen. Accept, O oh Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We praise you and thank you, Lord. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We praise and thank you, Lord. 
We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy, satisfy and delight us. We praise and thank you, Lord. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. We praise and thank you, Lord. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. We praise and thank you, Lord. We give thanks for everyone who is gathered tonight to celebrate the risen Christ. Grant us the confidence, confidence that in you all things are being made new. Give, give us the gift of seeing your creative restoration in our world. And through your spirit working in us, Make our lives a grateful response. Amen. My sisters and my brothers, the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, God. Peace be with you. 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 Yes, yes. Peace be with you, George. Peace be with you, Paul. Good job. Peace be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with you. Please be seated. So I think it's around 9.30 today. I come by and uh, Jesse and Robbie are carrying out an armchair to take it to the Salvation Army. I walk past them and... Uh, there's a, a, a clamor in the kitchen area as cafe is getting prepared for tomorrow. I walk a little further. Uh, the altar guild is gathering to uh, set up for tonight. Uh, I get into the worship space uh, uh, and a, a few folks are, are there to uh, discuss the, the lighting and switching out the switches. Uh, uh, and then I go a little farther and uh, the three people who... Uh, uh, who wrote their, uh, their interpretations of the stories were rehearsing uh, uh, with Randolph and, and Bob, uh, and that's just a, a, a snapshot. And the Flower uh, Guild was beginning hours and hours of preparation, uh, and that's just a snippet of what this week is. is. Uh, so as, as Randolph mentioned, uh, the, the, the blasphemy of raising Christ, it does... Uh, feel like uh, uh, there is new life and that there is resurrection in the fact that uh, these uh, Holy Week liturgies require so many hands, uh, so many voices, uh, and uh, that a church would give that much time uh, and commit so much to, uh, uh, to, to taking that story and, and sowing it into our hearts. Uh, is part of the Holy Week and the Easter experience. So uh, that is a long-winded thank you uh, to the congregation and for all of the, uh, the staff and for all of the folks that do so much. Uh, also, all are welcome at the Lord's table. Uh, this is the Lord's table, and he welcomes you. Uh, uh, come forward, and if you prefer to see, receive a blessing, come forward with your arms crossed. Uh, and if you need a gluten-free wafer, make that known as well. Uh, and finally, the offerings during Holy Week and Easter uh, are for outreach, uh, for our servant ministries that go straight outside these doors uh, to make a difference, to make an impact, uh, to be transformational in the world. So please give generously. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <clears throat> subject to evil and death. You and your mercy said Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and undending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinless of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 